This is your call to action. Get prepared, America. Economy, survival, energy, disasters. This is USAprepares.com. Informative radio, educational radio. Interact now by emailing instructor at USAprepares.com or text at 434-390-7953. Class, please take your seats. Now, your instructor, Vincent Finelli. <laughs> Everyone all set, cocked, locked. Here we go. Your dial is set correctly to usaprepares.com. Broadcasting two hours from high atop the Missouri Ozark Mountains, Studio A. And uh, there's a link to all of your instructors on the website, usaprepares.com. Converging threats are confronted daily by your instructors. I'm Vincent Finelli. Aaron is engineering the broadcast. John Reagan's with us. Welcome, John Reagan. Good morning, Vincent. Hey, John, um, top of the hour news uh, a couple seconds ago, the government uh, has found gaps in where ammonia Ammonium nitrate is being stored in the United States of America. To me, that means that um, they want to do more tracking of where ammonium nitrate is being stored. Now, when, when we fertilize our front yard, backyard gardens, you know, we use nitrogen, potassium, and uh, uh, phosphorus. Well, the principal ingredient in fertilizer, the ingredient that makes green green, is uh, nitrogen. That would be ammonium nitrate in a lot of fertilizers, commercial fertilizers. I'm trying to think. I think I just bought um, just a little over three tons, three tons of fertilizer, 6,000 pounds, and I spread it on our fields. So are they tracking uh, me? I guess they are. Now, what are we going to do? What are we going to do when we can't get fertilizer? Um, because uh, the government regulations say, wait a minute, no, you know, your books aren't up to date and uh, you can't sell anymore because we don't know exactly where all the fertilizer that you've been blending has gone. So, for example, when I buy fertilizer for our pasture, I tell them exactly how I would like it blended. You know, how much, how much of each ingredient. Um, how much nitrogen, how much uh, potassium, how much potash, how much I'd like in um, uh, trace minerals. So it comes where I, I could probably get almost pure ammonium nitrate if I wanted, and it's stored locally. So the question is, is the government going to get into our faces and stop uh, the commercial fertilizing of our fields if... Uh, if that's what we choose to do, to grow grass, to grow cows, or, or grow vegetables, to grow food. That's a big concern to me. John, last October, October 23rd to be precise, we reported that uh, there were dog treats, pet treats, that were coming into this country from China that were killing our, our animals. And uh, we have a post on our website today, Petco, P-E-T-C-O, has decided to stop selling those dog treats. This has been seven months, right, That uh, since we've reported it. And I'm sure we weren't the first to report it. So since October 23rd, we've reported that animals are dying from these pet treats. And we even named the names and the brands of these pet treats. Well, Petco has decided that they're going to cut down on the sales of these treats. Now, they're going to stop selling them by the end of the year. I think it's nice that they're uh, being <clears throat> uh, slightly, slightly proactive, slightly, in the selling of these treats, uh, in the reduction of the selling of these treats. So I've decided to put the telephone number for Petco on the air. So if you'd like to call 
the media department and say, hey, uh, you heard on the air that this is going on and you want to do some investigative reporting, I authorize any and all of you in our class to give Petco a call and see if you can find out what's going on and when they're going to stop and why they haven't stopped. I mean, ask them any questions you'd like. Be polite, please, as always. Here's her number, 858-909-4665. 858-909-4665. That's Petco. John Reagan, uh, I'm at the financialstateoftheunion.com. I've clicked on the news tab. I am on resources for USA Prepares, uh, USA Prepares May 21st. So if uh, any of uh, our class would like to follow along when we get to that point, resources for usaprepares.com, you can go to the financialstateoftheunion.com, click on the news tab, or you can go to page one of usaprepares.com and click on the Financial State of the Union or resources for USA Prepares, John Reagan. Um, and you can follow along. John, uh, item number one is not on the resources for today, right? Right. Now, before we even get to that, let's talk about what you just talked about. Okay. One, uh, yes, the government wants to track everything. Everything. Uh, if you think that barter is going to be an option if there is still an existing government after the event, think again, because they're going to know every resource that's out there. And if you are able to do anything beyond that, you will attract suspicion, much like you know, even back in the 80s, say you operated a, uh, a laundromat, which is a cash business. They would check your water usage and your electric usage to see how that matches what revenue you reported for the business because they knew what range it should be in. And if you were skimming that cash off the top, you would be in trouble with the IRS. It's just another part of government control. Plus, let's look at what do they normally do when they try these things. Nobody is concerned about controlling fertilizer right now until we have another Oklahoma City-type event. Right. So be on the lookout is what I would say. Yeah, um, John, I literally I bought um, 6,000 pounds, just a little over 6,000 pounds. And I bought it in bulk. And what that means is it was not in bags. It was not in those 40 or 50 pound bags. I, uh, when you buy it, you can borrow what's called, they call it a buggy. It really is a four wheeled trailer with a spreader built in. And the spreader is powered by the PTO of the back of a tractor. So if you have a substantial pickup truck that can uh, pull that kind of a load, you can get, you know, several tons in this buggy, and you can drive it to your farm. And uh, so do they know that I put every every grain of fertilizer on the farm? No. No. And it's really none of their business. And what if I wanted to store some? You know, what if I wanted to put it in in barrels and uh, and store it? Let's say I thought that I ought to keep some for my garden. And so I take a shovel and or I take the... Uh, the front end loader of a small tractor, and I get a scoop out, and I and I dump it into a 55 gallon uh, drum, and put the lid on it, and and put it in the you know in the barn somewhere for later use. Is there anything wrong with that? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, if I were going to store it, that's exactly what I would do. I would put it in a barrel in my in my barn because it would keep it uh, dry and it'd keep the, the fertilizer uh, useful. Well. I'm wondering if any farmers do that. I haven't done that, but uh, I do have a couple bags of fertilizer, some 50-pound bags that I bought, you know, for the garden to uh, supplement uh, should I need it in case of an emergency. I've had it for several years, you know, maybe maybe six years, five years, something like that. Um, and I'm thinking in hard times, if I need to grow something quickly, or if I want a teaspoon and put it for the indoor, uh, mix it with water and put it in the indoor. Uh, uh, supplement the indoor plants. I can do that, but is there anything wrong with that? But I can I can just see the news now. You know, broadcaster. 
farmer, activist. He's got guns in his studio. He's got ammunition in his studio. He's got bags of fertilizer. That could be two bags, right? Bags of fertilizer in his barn. He's got gasoline stored. Yeah, of course. I mean, a couple, a couple five-gallon uh, containers. We don't use much gasoline on the farm. Diesel. You know, all of those things. Sounds like, uh, sounds like a real scandal ready to, uh, to break, right, John? So I, I wanted to share with you what the, what the media could do with some news and how they could twist it and make it seem like uh, someone's doing some really bad things with some common, ordinary items, like fertilizer, like a 55-gallon uh, plastic barrel or two or three, uh, some ammunition, a 45 and an AR-15. And, uh, you know, they could throw in, you know, um, thousands of feet of wire. You know, so, so now it's wire, um, some truck batteries, some car batteries, some fertilizer, ammunition, 55-gallon barrels. Sounds like uh, the making of, uh, of terror, right? And they're all common things. I used to... A spool of wire yesterday uh, in the in the garage. I was uh, doing some wiring out there. I, when I buy wire, I buy it a thousand feet at a time, a thousand foot spools. So, you know, I had a partial spool left over, maybe three quarters of it left over. So, I mean, the news can really make hay with with some of these things. John Reagan, your thoughts? Did we lose John Reagan? <laughs> Okay, so we lost John Reagan. Pastor Bland, uh, I talked to Pastor, Pastor Bland just before the broadcast. Sylvester Bland, he's with uh, Operation American Spring. And he's going to be calling in with a report. When we, we started uh, broadcasting about Operation American Spring just before, just before the event kicked off on the 16th of this month, we thought that there'd be about a thousand people. Well, we we're pretty darn close. That's about what we have, and he's going to have an update for us very soon. He's scheduled to call in today during the broadcast. I'm Vin Finelli, USAPrepares.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> John Reagan's with us, and um, he got uh, knocked off uh, during the uh, previous segment. It's good to have you back, John. Hey, John, uh, I was talking about fertilizer and wire and car and truck batteries and how uh, the old media, the dinosaur media, can make hay out of that. You know, how uh, when our farm is raided, they can say they found all these all these things, you know, and and, uh, and fuel, you know, diesel fuel. And, and they, they can make it seem like uh, Timothy McVeigh was, you know, small potatoes compared to, you know, all the <laughs> all the stuff we have at the farm because he was just driving a truck, right? But, I mean, every farmer... Every farmer that I know has the kinds of things that I just mentioned. Every single farmer. They've got uh, uh, firearms to protect their animals, to protect their farm. They have diesel fuel. They've got gasoline in cans. They've got car and truck batteries. They've got, they've got spools of wire. They've got barbed wire. They've got, um, uh, even they've, they've got insecticides. You know, they've got uh, uh, mineral supplements. They've, they've got everything you could think of. And uh, the media could have a heyday with that because the average city person wouldn't have any of those things, maybe, except maybe some uh, um, roach powder or something for, uh, you know, killing roaches. Back to you, John. You know, I might need to start keeping track of when the Internet goes down, but it seems like it happens a little bit more often between 9 and 11 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it does. And, uh, and well, since since you mentioned that, it it brings to mind a discussion that you and I had before you were going to fill in for me for three days uh, when I was attending the National Association of Broadcasters Convention in Las Vegas. So you were going to fill in, and, and we talked about um, uh, the instructors who would be on the air with you, and we talked about how it would go, and you'd never done it before. You'd never uh, sat in, in the left, left-hand left seat. Um, 
Of course, you've been on the air with me many times, but you've never, uh, you know, run run the broadcast. And I mentioned to you that, you know, there are a whole bunch of things that could go wrong, get disconnected. The uh, instructor could get disconnected. Um, instructor might not show up. Uh, so many things could go wrong. So we talked about it, and we kind of laughed, and I said, uh, I said to you, you know, when we're 75, we're going to, you know, we'll be sitting down, we'll be laughing about, about you know, what might have happened or what did happen. And, you know, John, <laughs> all of the things that we talked about happened. <laughs> we should talk about that someday on the air. Not today, but let's talk about what, was that fun or what? No, yeah, you know, you'll fly a plane and, you know, you, you the landing gear might not come down. You might lose an engine, mm -hmm. you know. But to have it all happen at one time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's and it did. It did. It happened to John Reagan all within a space of, uh, like, two hours. It happened. Actually, it all happened within a space of one hour. And you had to de actually, it happened within a half an hour, uh, the first half hour, and you had to deal with it uh, for the next hour and a half. John Reagan, um, we were talking about, uh, <clears throat> during the break, about farming and we're talking about uh, the three businesses that we have in this little hamlet where I live. There's a post office, and that is a business. And we're talking about the farm supply, and then there's a, a tire shop, and that's it. That's all we have in, in, in well, there's a gas station, you know, uh, down the road. That's it. And um, the tire shop is a business that actually has customers because there's so many gravel roads here, and the, and the county has this tractor with a, a road grader, and they turn all the, the pointy rocks pointy side up so that we get flats like crazy i mean people are riding around with 10 ply tires just so they can drive down their own road to get to their farm because there's so many pointy pointy rocks and the pointy side is up and uh you've got a little story about tires don't you yeah you know if you were here in dallas you'd have a couple more options yeah. there's lots okay. of used tire stores here uh -huh. and there's also this business that had actually started up before we left Texas. It's called Rent a Tire. So in case you can't afford new tires, you can go there and rent them, and you can even rent wheels to go with them. You know, John, this is so foreign to me. I just can't. I just can't understand renting tires. Now I do know the tires are pretty expensive because when we buy tires for our uh, Dodge pickup truck, a uh, uh, three-quarter ton pickup truck. The tires and uh, just the tires and the shipping in is about $1,000 for four tires. So I understand it's expensive, but it still seems foreign to me. You know, most people are not buying that large and heavy of a tire where they're $250 a piece. But renting tires just, just seems foreign. We'll talk about that when we come back. John Reagan, the Financial State of the Union, dot com. <laughs> Uh, I'm still thinking about these uh, these rented tires and rented wheels, and there's so many complications with that. You know, like I, I can just hear the uh, the stories now. <clears throat> the dealer hearing, well, you know, I had them, but you know, they, they they were stolen, so I don't have them anymore. But the wheels and the tires are they're all stolen. I can just I can just hear it now. John Reagan, I I was looking at the website, uh, thefinancialstateoftheunion.com, and there's an events tab. And I'm, I'm happy to report, John, that I was talking with Erin Dakins yesterday, and I called her, and, and uh, she's going to have you on. So there's uh, so for the late-night listeners to her broadcast, uh, The Truth Traveler, right here on GCN, uh, you'll be able to hear John Reagan, and that's coming up soon. So you might want to check the com, the events tab, and you'll find out when it's going to be. Okay, John. What's next? Well, Monday we started talking about a special report I put together called It's Later Than You Think. We didn't get yes. to complete it, so we're running into part two here. And we were talking about how the car has changed. It used to be that in America the car symbolized freedom. You know, it's what we used to travel whenever and wherever we wanted to go to. Well, it's morphing into part of the surveillance and control system, and the new cars out there have 
the ability to know where you are, know how fast you're going, and know what the speed limit is at where you're at. Then it can also track and record that and transmit that to whoever wants it, whether it's the manufacturer, the government, the insurance company, or all the above. And if you think things like red light cameras and speed cameras are invasive, just wait until this comes online. There was an article out of the Daily Mail. Uh, I call it the pain in Spain because the pain mm -hmm. in Spain is going to be mainly in the wallet drain. They have enacted new driving laws. And in the, of course, this is a UK publication, so it's in pounds and kilometers. You'd be fined 400 pounds for going just one kilometer per hour above the speed limit. Now, to put that into American terms, one kilometer per hour is less than a mile an hour. It's about two thirds of a mile an hour. So it's kind of like almost a rounding error, even. And 400. Uh, actually, talks about 420 pounds is about 675 dollars. So imagine if we had the same laws that Spain has enacted, you could get a 675 dollar fine for doing less than a mile an hour above the speed limit. John, and for those of us who have analog speedometers, we're talking about probably less than a needle's width on the speedometer, you know, the indicator, the pointer, the needle width, that's probably about a mile an hour. So we're talking about less than a needle width um, error in reading while you're driving or traveling down the road while you're, you know, glancing at your speedometer and looking ahead and behind and left and right and, and all those things that you're doing while you're, while you're operating your, your vehicle. And, um, and also, one of the things that I do, always, I always do this, is whenever I buy tires, John, because I live on a gravel road and because I'm interested in more fuel economy, I buy oversized tires. So my speedometer is probably always off. And literally, I try to buy tires that might be as much as 5, 6, or 7% larger than the original equipment tires. I go under the vehicle, I measure the clearance, and I find the largest tire that will fit on that wheel. And the reason for that is I have less revolutions per mile. So I literally get more miles per gallon than my odometer uh, is, is reporting if I do the calculation of fuel consumption versus miles driven because the car has actually traveled or the truck has traveled farther by five, six, or seven, eight percent than is indicated. And I don't do that for any other reason than I want more distance between the wheel and the road because I want the tire to soak up the bumps, the tire to deflect over these darn pointy side up rocks on our road and I, you know I want less uh, less damage to the tires fewer flats and actually I don't want any flats um, <clears throat> but that's what I do so this is a real problem and we have a post on our our website John uh, usaprepares.com at New York New York is um, changing its fines up to six hundred dollars and eleven points for speeding in New York City. Now, the speed limit's 25. I mean, how fast can you possibly go in New York City anyway? It's bumper to bumper to bumper, side to side. How fast can you possibly go? Okay, And they are, um, they are driving up revenue with, with the same kind of nonsense that's happening in Spain. It's everywhere. And how do you fight this? How do you say, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. So some cop says, you know, here's your ticket. It was you. And it might not even be you. I mean, how do you even fight the system for this? Unless you have a dash camera and you've got your dash camera aimed at your uh, speedometer. You know, plus consider, you know, like here in Dallas, everything's fairly flat. But in the Ozarks, especially if you're traveling between Springfield 
and Branson, you get into some pretty steep places. So if you're right. traveling, and the cops are at the control, bottom. Yeah, and the cops are at the control, bottom of the hill. Yeah. You know, once you can start going downhill there, you end up going faster than what you have your cruise control set on. And with devices like this, you know, how do they count it? Is it every instance? Is it the amount of time that you spend over? It's going to get nasty. And, of course, the point is is to drive you into the self-driving cars. Yeah, then you don't have to worry, heck. And, by the way, then who gets fined? Is it the uh, is it the software manufacturer, the hardware manufacturer for these cars? Is is it the manufacturer of the car itself, or is it the owner of the car, or is it the uh, 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 the bank who might be financing the car? Actually, who is it? I guess it would be uh, the operator. And okay. some of this is already coming about in our laws. I uh, came across Map 21, which is the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act. It was H.R. 4348 in the 112th Congress, and it's now Public Law 112-141. Now, I did not attempt to read the bill. Of course, Congress doesn't do that anyway. But I did read the summary on it. I spent over an hour doing that and ended up skimming just through a lot of it because I was trying to find out about the event data recorders, the EDRs that uh, do the tracking of what's going on in your vehicle, like the black box in an airplane. And I picked out a, a few of these sections just for some quick discussion. Section 1203 is a setup talks about the national goals, which includes reducing the traffic fatalities or serious injuries on all public roads. Uh, number three under that is improve the efficiency of the surface transportation system, which if you do self-driving cars, that would certainly improve the efficiency. And five, enhance the performance of the transportation system while protecting the natural environment. Of course, it's all for our health and safety. Mm -hmm. Down in Section 31,206, it talks about fines for tampering with the odometer. It increases the fine from $2,000 to $10,000 for each violation and from $100,000 to $1 million for a related series of violations. And from 1500 to 10000 the alternative amount of maximum civil damages for violating the federal prohibition against fraudulent tampering with odometers. Mm -hmm. And that's just the odometer. You still start talking about these data recorders. I have not found anything specific, at least in this law, about tampering with those. Uh, however, that does not mean it's not in another law. It does not mean that they might not have these devices highly integrated with the computer in your car so that if you attempt to disable it, your car won't run. And it may be covered under other acts that you might not even think about, like intellectual property and the hacking of computers, because odds are when you buy the car somewhere in the fine print is, just like the software, you don't own this. You have licensed it. Yeah, that's Bill Gates. Yeah, he taught us how to do that. How to be, uh, how to be purchasers of software where we don't own it, and software's got bugs in it. So we have, like Windows, Windows ninety five. Then we have version A, and then Windows ninety five version B, then Windows ninety five version C. And then Windows 98, and Windows 98 Second Edition, and Millennium, and it get what, Windows 2000, and each version we had to buy the the next version at eighty nine dollars. Each version. To uh, to overcome the bugs in the previous version, 
And we had to pay for fix after fix after fix after fix. Yeah, he taught us how to do that. And he became uh, the world's richest guy for a while, right? Or at least in this country. Charging us for a product that uh, he said we didn't even own. Bill Gates. He's one of these guys that wants to reduce the population of the world. Of course, uh, it wouldn't start with him, would it? John Reagan, Vin Finelli, USAPrepares.com. You know, John, every once in a while I have to push back from the microphone. I'm numb. I'm numb. And, and just thinking about what you just said makes me numb. John Reagan and I are talking about uh, automobile tracking and, and where we're headed. And government surveillance everywhere. It's pervasive. Uh, John, I got a call from, from a gentleman by the name of Mike. I won't uh, use his last name on the air until I get his permission. But he called me from Austria yesterday and he called the number on the website and he, he on the telephone he called me from austria and um i had mentioned that i have this uh this mercedes i bought this 2000 model 14 years old it's a model 430e and i wanted to disable the gps tracking system that mercedes knows everywhere i go well you know i looked it up on the internet and Basically, what a lot of these posts say is if you want to disable it, call Mercedes or bring it to Mercedes. It's kind of a hidden um, hidden method to disable the, the tracking system. It's not complicated. It's just that you have to know which wires to disconnect. Well, he gave me the information, and, uh, and if I have his permission, I will share that with you on, uh, on the website, usaprepares.com. But... This, this is a is a real problem being tracked everywhere we go, and this is a 14 year old vehicle, and Mercedes Benz knows where it is. They know if you've got one, 2000 model or newer, they know where that vehicle is. Even if you don't subscribe to their um, tracking system or their emergency uh, uh, call-in system, should you have a, a failure, they know where you're where your Mercedes is. I mean, literally, they knew that I was in an intersection, you know, when I had a failure because coffee was spilled on the, uh, on the transmission computer right down the gear shift at night. So it's, to me, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty invasive. I don't like it. And, uh, and, you know, John, I mentioned that I put oversized tires on my cars and trucks. I also put oversized tires on the trailers that we have. I put, I put oversized tires on everything because oversized tires carry a heavier load. They're safer. There's a bigger footprint. You know, there's more rubber on the road. They're heavier, stronger. I'm not trying to defeat any, uh, any mileage calculation system. It's just better. And automobile manufacturers are trying to save money, so they want to put smaller tires on. I want to put bigger tires on for safety. So the trailers have them. Everything we've got has oversized tires on it. And I can just see it in the future that if you tamper with the size of the tire, if you change your tire from you know making it wider, that, that I, I can just see that becoming illegal. Just as, as everything else that you're talking about, that uh, in MAP21, MAP-21, is making uh, the fines are a million-dollar fine for tampering with speedometers. Come on. Who can afford that? It's, it's cruel and unusual punishment. Who are these lawmakers? They all need to be fired, every single one of them. Never re-elect anybody. And I mean it. And when I run for sheriff, you don't want to reelect me either. Never reelect anyone. And after the election for the board of directors for Laclede Electric Co-op, you don't want to reelect me for that, even if I were to get in. You want to find somebody else. John, please continue. Now, the last section I wanted to touch on was section 31,105. Okay. And this talks about programs that address national priorities for reducing highway deaths and injuries. Mm -hmm. It talks about things like the alcohol ignition interlocks for people that have had, you know, DWIs. It gets into seatbelt usage, which is already tracked by your 
EDR. And it also later on talks about distracted driving, which includes things like texting, which we know is a bad thing. It is. And just think about how nice it would be to have those cameras in your car that detect that you're texting on your cell phone and causes you to slow down automatically. And yeah, we've got the event, so you yeah, just and and uh, you know why mail you the ticket? Just extract it from your bank account, whatever the amount is. Save everybody a lot of hassle. Just steal it right from your bank account. There's a post on the website usaprepares.com. Ford, Ford is tracking, is tracking all the audio that goes on in your vehicle, all the audio going on in your vehicle. They're storing it and saving it. Ford, Ford. John Reagan and I will be right back after top of the uh, hour news and commercials. Everyone all set, cocked, locked, hour number two of USAPrepares.com. We just heard at the top of the hour that uh, the uh, former Egyptian president, Mubarak, was sentenced uh, to three years, uh, I guess that means in prison, for embezzling. Now, that begs the question. I guess it's not, it's not embezzling traveling all over the world on vacation, right? So you can do that. I mean, you can get elected or selected, or you can be the wife of someone who is selected for office, travel all over the world, and that's not, that's not embezzling. Uh, and, and you can, well, you can go on golf outings, uh, about 163 of them, while, uh, while being in office, and that's not embezzling. So I guess... I guess it's all in the defining of what what you really mean by embezzling. But I can tell you that if I ever had a job and I had been at the uh, at the job for five years, let's say, and I had been golfing 163 times, you know, I'd be fired. If I had been golfing 63 times, I'd be fired. If I had been golfing three times you know during the week when I'm supposed to be working I'd be fired or if I decided to go to China and Europe and uh, bring the family and a uh, whole oh, couple of couple hundred of my closest friends you know on the company dime I'd be fired just uh, just thinking out loud John Reagan's with us we've been talking about spy technology it's absolutely out of control. And, and who are these people? You've got to ask yourself, do you have any neighbors who think like this? Who say, geez, you know, if I could just get a more powerful set of binoculars, maybe I could see what's happening in that pool, you know, down the road. Maybe if I could get a higher vantage point, maybe I could, you know, video those guys. Hey, Get some audio. I mean, who are these sick people? They're in government. They're in government. How, how much time do they have to dream up this stuff? Why would they even care what we're doing? Really? John Reagan? It's all about control. It is about control, and we had we had Joey Kyle at, at the meetup, and I know you weren't there, but last Monday we had Sheriff Joey Kyle, Christian County, Missouri, and he used the word control, and it is all about control. They want to control us, you know. And and when we get stopped by by a cop, they they the one thing that they really enjoy, the high points of their day is controlling we the people. Stay in your car. License, registration, and if you and if you say something like "why," you get tased, thrown down on the ground, stomped into the pavement. Uh, there's a guy, there's a guy who was kicked right in the groin. A college guy it's, uh, on USAPrepares.com. He got kicked in the groin, had to have a testicle removed because of an out of control, belligerent criminal, criminal cop. Now. Let's go back to the Bible. A testicle for a testicle. What do you think? 
Jeez. I'm sorry, John. Back to you. Well, when I moved to the Ozarks, I don't remember who told the story about how you would go about capturing a hog. And you start out by uh, feeding them, and I think the example here used, you know, just some stale jelly donuts you could get for next to nothing. The hog yep. loves it. Mm-hmm. And you, you start feeding them, and you get some used to come to a certain place. Then you put up a section of fence, and you continue feeding them, no problem. Put up the second section, continue feeding them, no problem. Put up the third section, continue feeding them, no problem. Install the gate, but leave it open, continue feeding them, no problem. And then you feed them, and when he goes in there, you close the gate. And we are so close to having that gate closed on us. You know, when you're talking about this, I, I thought you were talking about the ghetto in uh, Nazi Germany. It's the 21st century version. Mm-hmm. And you're not kidding, are you? No. No, I know you're not. And I'm not either. You know, when, when people come into the studio, John, you, you've, been, uh, you've been in the studio where I'm broadcasting from now in Missouri. You've seen the, uh, the, uh, the remembrance of, uh, or, or the reminders I have in the studio of Nazi Germany. I have a, uh, a photograph right behind me of uh, LZ-129, the Hindenburg, with on the tail two Nazi Nazi flags. It's a literal. It's a photograph. It's not a poster. It's not a litho. It's a, it's an original photograph, one of a kind. And uh, it's the photo of where it, it touched down in Lakehurst uh, Naval Ammunition uh, Station in New Jersey uh, before it uh, on the voyage before it blew up or was blown up. I think blown up um, in a big fireball. It was it was a front page news for several days when that happened. We are really close, and um, I've said I've said on uh, on USAPrepares dot com when I first started broadcasting that what's happening to America is right out of Adolf Hitler's playbook. You know, we even have the Obama the Obama Youth. Hitler had his youth, and uh, one of the homework assignments that I posted on the website was watching the video, and it's available on Netflix. Um. It's called the, the Goebbels Experiment. And it's, it's a few people who are absolutely fanatics, who want control. And just a few people. I'm talking about uh, Himmler, Goebbels, and a few other henchmen were able to bring Germany to its knees in ruins and uh, be part of the greatest war that, uh, that the world has ever seen up to that point because of their desire for control. And we've got the same thing going on right here in the United States of America. A few, a few fanatics. Um, and the uh, Germans, the Nazis would have loved, loved the technology to control us the way, the way the Obama administration is deploying its control tactics. It's out of control. It's immoral. It's criminal. And the people who are perpetrating it should be in prison. John, I, I'm, uh, I was thinking about uh, last night, I was working with a few uh, 20-something-year-old young men here at the farm, and we were working on, uh, on rebuilding the shuttle, the shuttle transmission of a, uh, of a backhoe. And it was, it's, it's a pain in the neck to do this. I mean, it's a, it's a couple day job, you know, if you're doing it on the ground and you're back. And, um, it was getting dark. And, uh, after dinner, the boys and I went outside and there they were. You could see, you could see in the moonlight chemtrails, more chemtrails. They're blatant. They're just not stopping. They're out of control. And people are having <clears throat> respiratory problems right now all over the Ozarks. And it's not just in the Ozarks. These people are criminals. They need to be behind bars. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering why we haven't set up our own courts 
our courts where we arrest people and we try them and we meet out uh, whatever justice is part of our system. Why are we using their system? It's not working. Why are we allowing these criminals to do what they're doing? They're killing us. They're poisoning our food. They're poisoning our food supply. You know, I can't think of a single thing that the government has done right. I really can't. And as Rome burns, we're going on vacation. We're playing golf with our closest friends. It's nuts. What's next, John? Uh, you've talked about recommending getting an older car. Yeah. The next article asks the question, when will the loophole be closed? Because the older cars, especially some of the classics that are out there, which you see in Springfield twice a year, uh, you've got these beautiful old cars that are kept nice, uh, but they don't have any of the modern stuff, you know, no electronics, yeah. you know, uh, no catalytic converters. And all it takes is one law. And all of a sudden, those would no longer be street legal unless you bring them up to code, which would be quite expensive. And we can take this a step further and look at when they come to the self-driving car. If you want to insure your car, which it's mandated by the government that you do so, and if you have a loan on that vehicle and have to have comprehensive coverage, it's going to be even more expensive. To have a person driver, that risk is going to cost you so much in insurance that you'd probably have to be a millionaire in order to drive yourself. Yeah. John, uh, you know, I, I clicked on that post that, uh, from the link on your website, and it takes you to, uh, to some classic cars. And I'm looking at the picture of this, uh, this Dodge. And it reminds me of, uh, of a vehicle that I have in our garage right now. I have a 1968 American Motors, they're defunct, AMX. It's a pretty rare vehicle. They didn't make very many of them. About 7,000 in three years, in the three years of production of the, of the real AMX. So we have two of them. And a blue one and a red one. They're 46 years old. One of them is roadworthy. And one of them we drive once in a while. And uh, I consider it an investment in rarity. And I can just see what you're saying. That can be made illegal. Ed Marvini's uh, giving me some really good tools to work with. Uh, Usersite.com. U-S-E-R-S-I-G-H-T dot com. He built the uh, the website uh, for me to use. And during the break, I decided to put up a couple posts or a post of, uh, of uh, 1968 AMX. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, there's a picture of it. It's in red. Just uh, We have a red one. So if you want to see what it looks like, there are not many of them around today. And, you know, I, I want to I wanna keep it because it's not replaceable. It's just flat out not available. And um, anyway, I wanted to share that with you, that, you, John, you're absolutely right. They can pass a law and say, you know, that darn thing doesn't have catalytic converters. Nope, it doesn't. It doesn't have um, airbags in the steering wheel, right? It, it, it does have seatbelts, though. They, they were introduced in 1964. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think maybe it doesn't have a lot of other safety features, features that the government thinks that we need to have in vehicles today. But you know what? It's 46 years old, and it's never been in an accident, ever. So, just a thought. Uh, John Reagan, we have Pastor Bland, Sylvester Bland, Operation American Spring, with an update. Um, it's delightful having you on the air with us, Pastor Bland. Hey, man, thank you. Yeah, it's, it is a pleasure to be here. So what, what's happening in Washington, D.C.? You, you're on the ground right there right now. Uh, you're camped out. You've been there um, since the 15th, I believe, of this month. So what's, what's new? Oh, it's a, a lot of, a lot of uh, things happening. Uh, I'm standing about uh, 50 yards from the Aerospace Museum here on the mall. 
And uh, every day it's been a tremendous blessing. We're seeing new faces every day. People come and they stay one day, two days, you know, a week, and then they have to go home. People are rotating and rotating in and rotating out, which is which is fine. That's that's all we need. And uh, but we're, we're going to get a real a significant uh, shot in the arm in the uh, next coming uh, uh, days because rolling thunder, as well as uh, I think two million bikers are coming to uh, uh, bring their support, and uh, that's going to be exciting. You know, and, 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 and we have a presence. And what, what are the things that I'm excited about is uh, every day, uh, while there is a, a, a smaller numbers, uh, every person here is, uh, is asked to call their, their representative, and that's what we're doing. They're making appointments, and it's a good uh, mile walk uh, to all the various, various offices, and they're having eyeball to eyeball. Of conversations with uh, the representatives, the ones that will let us in. And there are a few that don't even want to talk to us, but that's okay. They're going to hear us <laughs> real soon. Uh, Pastor Bland, I hope you're taking names and numbers of those who won't let you in and those who will, and that you uh, help uh, get those names and numbers to us here at usapreparers.com. I will share them with our broadcasting uh, friends and uh, Associates, so that they'll be able to give out the names and numbers of who, who are uh, with us and who are not with us. It'd yeah, be nice. Yeah, it'd be nice yeah. to know. Yeah. Um, yeah so, so if you uh, can, we, that'd be great. We, amen. And uh, well, I think it was a Monday or Tuesday. We uh, hand delivered uh, uh, a packet of our grievances of seventeen pages. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that uh, that uh, that's expressed uh, uh, exactly of. Uh, what we what we want uh, help put together by a, uh, a, a constitutional attorney, uh, as well as uh, what Operation American itself uh, uh, Spring is all about. So, uh, you know, we hand delivered all of those. I think it was uh, McKinney, uh, McKinney, uh, and uh, well, uh, I think Leahy, uh, I believe it is. Uh, uh, don't quote me on that. It's on our, it's on it's on our page though, on our Facebook page. Uh, Operation American Spring. I mean, it's OAS twenty four. 2014, OAS2014.com, uh, uh, the people who, who uh, kind of give us the brush off uh, is on that page as well. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. I'm, I'm going there right now. Okay, so um, is uh, Colonel Harry Riley on the ground? Is, is, he, uh, is he leading the, uh, the protest? Yes, yeah. He uh, he's been here every day. Uh, he had to uh, go home to take care of his wife. Uh, she she needs uh, some TLC, you know. And so, you know, he's just seventy six, uh, and uh, and uh, just celebrated his fiftieth anniversary. And so uh, you know, he wants to spend time with his wife as well. But he's coming back uh, Saturday when uh, Rolling Thunder uh, thunders in. Okay, and I understand that uh, Colonel Harry's uh, Harry Riley's wife. Uh, it's it's more than that. Uh, I think she's uh, handicapped, and yes. she needs his assistance. So it's yes. it's not like he's just going home for you know to bring her flowers, and it's not like that. It's way way more significant than that. Pastor, uh, thanks so much for being with us. I appreciate it. Class, we just heard from uh, Pastor Sylvester Bland. He's on the ground at at Operation American Spring in Washington D.C. Uh, his website, The United Saints. S A I N T S of America dot U S the United Saints of America dot U S. There's a link on the website USAPreparers dot com page one at the bottom. You can click on uh, Pastor Sylvester Bland. Take you right to his website. Rolling Thunder is uh, coming in on Friday, and I've posted on uh, USAPreparers dot com's website page one the schedule the 2014 schedule. So Friday, Rolling Thunder has a uh, a candlelight vigil at 9 p.m. at uh, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. Saturday, there, uh, there are uh, vendors, food, speakers, and music at um, uh, 22nd Street and Constitution Avenue. Then Sunday, um, there's a wreath-laying ceremony at the U.S. Navy Memorial, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. And then, uh, so the full schedule's there if you'd like to see it, uh, usaprepares.com page one. John Reagan, back to you. We've got two more links under It's Later Than You Think to just wrap this up. 
in addition to the government gaining all this control over us, the usual suspects profit. And this link talks about how Nokia uh, joining with companies like Apple, Microsoft, and you can name pretty much any hardware, software, communications company out there. Uh, Nokia is investing $100 million in developing technology for the connected car. And, of course, when they invest that, they expect to pay off. And John Reagan, you and I have talked about this for quite some time on this broadcast, the spying. And we've talked about how when you went to school and when I went to school and we studied finance and economics, and both of us have similar degrees, advanced degrees in economics and finance, that we were taught that companies needed to have products and services and customers in order to be profitable. And what is happening, and we've said it right here, that we don't really see that. What we really see is that companies that are doing well are in bed with the government. They are providing tools for spying. And that's exactly what we're talking about right here, right now, this very second. We're talking about Nokia. We're talking about Apple. We're talking about Verizon. Those companies are doing pretty well. And they are all providing spy data, spy information to the governments, uh, specifically the United States, but probably multiple governments around the world. Yes? Yeah, and uh, it, it's goes even beyond that because we've talked about this is moving towards the self-driven car and that means the loss of even more jobs and it goes beyond just the the usual suspects like you know buses and taxis uh, the truck drivers you know those are the obvious ones but John can I, I'm going to stop you for I'm going to stop you for just a second or I'll, or I'll uh, I'll, I'll leak. <laughs> I'll explode. <laughs> when, when, you, when you said that, I was thinking about, uh, let's just take the, you're talking about self-driven cars. Okay. I've mentioned tractor therapy here on this broadcast, and, and, and I'm going to be doing tractor therapy uh, probably on Memorial Day. I'll probably be on the tractor cutting hay. And, um, you know, if it doesn't rain. Here's the point. So I'm on the tractor, and I'm, I'm looking out for small animals. I'm looking out for turtles. I'm looking out for uh, uh, baby deer. I'm, I'm looking out for rabbits. I just don't want to slice and dice them and turn them into, into um, blood and gore and guts. Okay, I don't want to do that. All right. Now, John Deere has this technology, uh, satellite GPS tracking technology for, for some of their tractors. I don't have it. But if you have a large farm and you want to have perfect rows, you can just sit back in a tractor, and it can drive, and it can navigate, and it can plow and plant and harvest, you know, without, without you uh, operating the tractor. Well, exactly how does that prevent the death of these animals? It does not. Okay, so, you know, there, there are things that the operator of a vehicle needs to know and see and do to prevent accidents and to prevent the loss of life. Okay, and exactly how are these driverless cars going to navigate around obstacles in the road, like shredded tires, things that have fallen off the back of uh, carelessly packed pickup trucks? How is that going to happen? Bottom line is all of this is designed to uh, to implant in our minds that it's for our own safety, just like these bozos who work for the government who've planted these these. Uh, guard wires that prevent you from crossing the median should you need to avoid an accident and get out in the grass and get away from harms from uh, vehicles approaching you. Or if you need to do a, a cross the median uh, where we have these wide medians in, uh, in Missouri where if a tornado is ahead of you and you, want to, and you want to go the other way and get out of the way, or if you want to avoid being in three hours of traffic jam because of a mess in front of you and traffic could be directed by the authorities, if you want to call them that, you know, to use the access roads that parallel the highways. No, can't be done anymore because they've planted these guard wires to prevent you from doing that. So now you are like cattle in a chute ready for slaughter. And I, I object 
to these driverless cars. I object to this technology that's, spy, that's spying us. I'm outraged. I'm sorry, I had to say that or I would explode. But wait, there's more. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, truck drivers, uh, bus drivers, taxi cab drivers right. are going to lose their jobs. We don't need them. But right. there's secondary effects, too. If you have a self-driven car, why would you want to go spend an hour at the airport going through this invasive security and waiting for a flight to go a short distance. Mm -hmm. You just get in one of these cars and go for the ride. Mm -hmm. Same thing with buses and trains. You know, why subject yourself to these crowded conditions and all the stops when you can just get in a car and go directly to where you want to go to? Yeah, and, and, and John, it, it's it's complicated. What what about the fuel? Does it know? Does it say, "Oh wow, <laughs> we're running low on fuel, boss"? Um, do you take over when you're running out of fuel, or does it know which stations are open, and, and does it know how much fuel they have because they might be out of fuel? Does it know that? I'm sure that'd be totally connected. Yeah, it's outrageous. But it, this even talks about going as far as. Uh, hotels can be hit, too, because if you can travel overnight, since you don't need to be awake, you, you can bypass stopping at a hotel to, to get sleep. You can just you know, be on the road. Well, and also, it, you know, if you extrapolate this, John, the car should know which hotels, if, if you need to stop, if, if the car thinks that you're so tired from watching it drive itself, that it knows that that <laughs> you're tired, it should automatically know where the hotels are and how many rooms they have that are vacant and whether they're smoking. And not, well, I guess there won't be any smoking rooms anymore, right? Uh, with this technology, that that will probably be outlawed too. Not that I smoke, but but some people do, and if they want to, go ahead. But so the car will know how much fuel it has, where the f fuel stops are, and whether they have fuel for you or not, and probably whether you have money or digits or assets in your account to even pay for it. And it, what? Now that brings the next question: What if you don't have enough wherewithal to stop for fuel? Does this thing just pull over the side of the road and say, "Look, boss, we're at we're, we got a problem, and I'm not going anywhere because you don't have any digits in your account. We can't buy fuel, so there's no sense in going any further. We'll just stop right here." Yeah, it probably knows where the closest FEMA camp is. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. You know, seriously, John, <laughs> I've said it. Sometimes I just have to push back from the microphone because I'm stunned, speechless, numb. And this is an outrage. And they, and they call this smart, right? Smart. This is really the opposite of smart. It's insanity. It's insanity. Yeah. Anytime you hear the, the term smart in front of something, replace that with spy, and you'll be a lot yeah. closer to the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think um, something happened that's really cool. Um, one of the guys at the meetup on Monday, um, Daryl, Daryl Stubblefield, said uh, he was at two of the meetups with uh, Sheriff Joey Kyle. And he wanted to know who owns this vehicle, this MRAP. And he said, uh, Sheriff, um, can I take it for a ride? <laughs> you know, and he, and he wasn't kidding. Daryl Stubblefield was not kidding. He wanted to take it for a ride. Not necessarily that night, but he wants to drive this thing. He's got a military background, and uh, he's retired, and he wants to drive this vehicle. Well, whose is it? Well, why can't he drive it? Why, why can't we all drive it? Why can't we all get trained in how to drive it? Seriously. What's wrong with that? What's wrong? Isn't it ours? Isn't this MRAP bars? Didn't we pay for it? So why don't we just, you know, get on the list and, and in orderly fashion uh, get lessons on how to drive this MRAP? It's ours. So all those people that lose their jobs from the self-driving vehicles are hmm. going to need work. So let's drop down to the employment section. I've got a link there I call Hello Mac Kiosk. And... <laughs> <laughs> this talks about McDonald's just bought 
touchscreen kiosks for its 7,000 European locations. <laughs> well, okay. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be quiet. Go ahead. Please continue. So, I, I know I'm going to say something that I shouldn't say. <laughs> so you think, okay, they can still have you know, the, the fry chefs back there. No, not yeah. anymore. They have the automation for the back end of the restaurant. They have machines that can produce 360 perfect custom-made gourmet burgers per hour. So they think they're going to get a $15 minimum wage. That will just cause these machines to go into these restaurants sooner. Yeah. We're eliminating the low end, people who can't survive on their McDonald's job. So we're getting rid of them. Let's put them on the street. There you go. We'll be right back. John Reagan's with us. The uh, financialstateoftheunion.com. The financialstateoftheunion.com. John, we don't have a meetup on Monday um, because we are observing Memorial Day. And it reminds me of uh, a Memorial Day piece uh, I did, or about the memorial, our memorial, in Washington, D.C., that the government shut down. And I'm going to uh, post that on the website, so if you'd like to hear it. And I want to thank Ron Gibson. Ron Gibson is a gentleman who lives on the East Coast. And what he does is he downloads usaprepares.com every day. And he posts it on YouTube commercial free. So if you want to uh, listen to the broadcast, you can. There are lots of ways you can do it. You can listen to us right here live. You can listen on the listen line with a telephone number, and that number is on the website, usaprepares.com. You can go to YouTube, and you can type in usaprepares.com radio, or USA Prepares radio show, and uh, you'll be able to listen to it. And uh, I was outraged at the closing of the uh, World War II Memorial. In, in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., uh, last year. And I did a, a four-minute, 11-second piece, and uh, you will hear the anger in my voice. And I'm going to uh, post that on the website uh, maybe today or tomorrow, so if you'd like to find it easily. Our special thanks to Ron Gibson for doing that. John Reagan, what's next? I've got one link in the financial section. I call it Off Target. And this shows a bunch of pictures from a Target <laughs> store in Canada. And it is uh -huh. sad looking. I, I've seen garage sales that look better than this. Something is going on in Canada, oh, and Target has fired their, the president of the Canadian operations. Uh, Sears is divesting itself of its Canadian operations. But when you look at those pictures, these companies have software in place that are supposed to ensure that the stores are properly stocked. And to see something like this, it's just mind-boggling. John, there was, a, there was a chain store on the East Coast. I think it was called W.T. Grant. It was referred to as Grant's. And uh, they were going out of business. And they would have 25% off everything in the store, then the following week, uh, 33, and then 40, then 50, then 60, and so forth. That's what this store looked like, these pictures. These pictures are like going out of business uh, environments where stores are, are shutting down. I mean, there are hooks, there are shelves, there are bins, there are baskets with nothing on them. John, this, this looks like... Um, I'll tell you what it looks like. This is no exaggeration. This looks like a store um, that's in the in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, okay? But the 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 floors are swept, so there's no trash. But the shelves are empty. It looks like it's been wiped out. Am I exaggerating, John? Not at all. And you could understand if this were, 
you know, the 60s and you had incompetent management that hadn't ordered product to stock the shelves. Yeah. But, you know, that just doesn't happen in these large corporations. Yeah. And I put a post on the website about the uh, CEO of Target. Um, he has received, I put it up yesterday, he, uh, he was fired af after that massive data breach. But he's going to receive $16 million in payoff. John, have you ever made a mistake for any organization, company, agency that you've worked for and with and, and received money for making a mistake? Have you ever? I missed I that haven't. class. I don't know anyone else who has. Yeah. Yeah. $15.9 million. This guy has the largest data breach in, in memory. Millions of people are affected. And he gets $16 million as a thank you. The board of directors should all be removed from Target. Class, above all, honesty and integrity. What happens next is up to you. Thanks so much, John Reagan.